for companies to promote these vaccines, and that's been proven. <clears throat> and this is uh, some of the propaganda that's being put out in the news media and put out to physicians' offices, assuring them that uh, these stories about dangers of vaccinating pregnant women just are all wrong. It's completely safe, and you can feel safe in getting your vaccine uh, to prevent the flu. Well, the other interesting thing is the studies show that the flu vaccine most often has no effect on preventing the flu because they guess which virus will be uh, predominant for that next year, and they go by using the virus the previous year, and you know this last year they were wrong. They picked the wrong virus, so the vaccine was totally worthless this year. Uh, and so even at best, if they pick the right virus, the effectiveness is about 30%. So even if the mother is vaccinated, she still doesn't get protection against the flu and can get the flu anyway, and the mercury suppresses her immunity, so her flu will be much more intense. Uh, and then there's a the question of, well, what is in a vaccine? Most people, that, and a lot of physicians, you'd be amazed at the number of physicians, you ask them, what's in a vaccine? They say, well, there's a, the bacteria, the virus that you want to vaccinate against, and then there's a, a little immune stimulant in there to help stimulate the immunity so they'll react against those uh, viral antigens. They don't know about all these other chemicals in there, like formaldehyde, uh, special proteins, special lipids that are known to be brain toxic, that are known to induce autoimmunity to the brain. Uh, they, they're not aware of that. They don't know that MSG is in a lot of, of, of uh, vaccines, monosodium glutamate, brain excitotoxin. Uh, they're not aware of what's in the vaccine they're given. And that's just the things that uh, you can find on the CDC site. There's things in a vaccine that most of you, or a lot of you, probably are not aware of. And the thing that concerns me is the number of, of uh, viruses, mycoplasma, uh, and viral fragments that are being found in vaccines. When they looked at vaccines, uh, uh, for instance, a Japanese study looked at six major manufacturers of vaccines, many of which make vaccines in the United States population. And what they found was that upwards to almost 60% of the vaccines were contaminated either with live viruses or with uh, uh, contaminants. Now these are viruses that are not supposed to be in the vaccine, like the pestivirus. Well, they downplayed it when they found a high percentage of these vaccines were contaminated with pestivirus. But they say, well, that's a virus of cattle and we don't know that it really does anything in humans. Well, I looked up pestivirus and it can induce spontaneous abortion in humans. Uh, so it does do things in humans that they really don't want you to know. Now the other thing that they found was viral fragments. And what these are is little pieces of DNA or RNA from the viruses, but it's not the actually living virus. They found that in a much higher percentage of vaccines. And so uh, I read this article and it was by a virologist and a uh, well-known virologist, and he said, well, yes, it's a, a high percentage of the vaccines are contaminated with viral fragments. And then the article ended by saying, but we don't think it will cause any problem. And I'm thinking you're, you're inoculating millions of people just in this country, and the best you can come up with is, I don't think it will cause any problem. Well, I looked up what happens when you inject viral fragments. And this was uh, actually led to a lot uh, of my hypothesis. Well, when you inject viral fragments, they enter the brain in the brain's special immune cell called the microglia cell. When it inserts itself in the microglia cell, it turns it on and the microglia cell becomes real hyperactive and it starts destroying brain cells and brain connections. Uh, this is the mechanism for dementia and AIDS. You know, a certain number of AIDS patients will develop severe dementia and become terribly demented very quickly. Well, we know the AIDS virus did not invade the brain cells itself. So the mystery was always, well, how is it causing dementia? It's because a fragment of the virus enters the microglia and the microglia become activated, secrete very toxic immune chemicals and excitotoxins and begins to destroy brain cells and brain connections. 
and that's how it produces the dementia. And here we're injecting viral fragments in people with vaccines that have the potential of doing the very same thing, but over a slower uh, uh, time period. Now, one of the things that really concerned me, uh, as bad as the contamination problem has been, and if we look at the, the vaccine manufacturers in this country, they've had some major, major uh, uh, scandals of vaccine contamination. Uh, I looked up uh, some of the, the FDA records, and the FDA records were saying that, uh, for instance, in my hometown, Monroe, Louisiana, uh, they were accepting plasma and components from people to make vaccines, and these people had never been adequately checked for medical conditions. In other words, they had infectious diseases that would be spread by the, the uh, vaccines and viral fragments that could enter the vaccine. And so they closed down the plant for a while, and then they reopened it. Well, the interesting thing was the FDA never goes back and checks if these vaccines have viral fragments in them or any live virus. They take the word of the manufacturer. There's no follow-up to see if the vaccines are clean. Now, of more concern is that now almost uh, the majority of vaccines made for the world, including the United States, are made in communist China. And uh, over here, the FDA uh, inspects the vaccine companies, uh, I use that term loosely, uh, inspects the vaccine company every two years. In China, it's inspected every 13 years. Now, when the FDA goes to China to inspect the plant, they're not allowed to enter the plant. They have the uh, officials in the plant come out and tell them everything's okay. And then that's how they do the inspection, once every 13 years. So that means now the vaccines probably be much more contaminated than ever before, and there will be no follow-up by the FDA. Like I said, the, the FDA doesn't follow up on domestically uh, produced vaccines. They're sure not gonna follow up uh, on Chinese-made vaccines. Well, you may have noticed that there's been a few scandals in the pharmaceutical industry in China recently. Babies being poisoned by baby formula, cough syrup that contains antifreeze, has killed thousands of people worldwide. Uh, all of these scandals are downplayed a lot. The, probably the death rate and the severe injury rate is 10,000 times higher than they're, they're admitting to. So the potential if you have these vaccines badly contaminated, and remember, this is a communist country that has sworn to destroy the United States. Uh, the potential of putting in a microorganism that they generate, that they make specifically as a weapon, and put it in the vaccine. By the time we discovered what had happened, you would have 100 to 150 million Americans vaccinated with an agent that you cannot remove from their body. So you could wipe out almost uh, two thirds of the population in the United States very quickly, or you could sicken them so bad they couldn't function. Now, as uh, Dr. Montes has pointed out, things are not always what we think. And if people in this government are ones behind the Chinese government doing this, as we've seen, if you've ever read the history of the Soviet Union, you know, the Soviet Union was created by money from the United States and from Germany and from the UK. So they created the Soviet monster that we spent billions on for 70 years. They created the Chinese government. The Chinese Communist government was created by machinations of our government. So there's this interlocking uh, relationship where if you want to carry out what uh, Dr. Monteith has said, population control, what easier way to do it than contaminate vaccines uh, where you would have sudden epidemic where millions died. It would be like the AIDS epidemic going forever. Oh, this mysterious disease is killing Americans. We have no idea why. Uh, we're investigating in all our major laboratories and 
by the time anyone would ever uh, get close to discovering what was the actual cause, uh, the culprits would have cleaned up all the evidence. And of course, how are you going to trace the evidence in a foreign country that is an uh, enemy of the United States? We would never be able to send investigating agencies to communist China uh, to discover these things. Now, there's a lot of complications to vaccines that are rarely talked about. In fact, when I spoke at a, at a meeting of uh, autistic parents, and one of the parents told me she went to her pediatrician, he told her, he said, I just got off the phone to the CDC, and they said that they have never seen a seizure caused by a vaccine. Well, I told her, I said, well, number one, I can tell you that he never called the CDC. He went back there and and uh, drank a cup of coffee and came out and told you he did because the CDC on their own site lists that a vaccine as a cause of seizures. So we know that uh, seizures was a major problem with the DPT vaccine. It uh, produces seizures in a very high percentage of children. We know that when you combine vaccines, the incidence of seizures goes up considerably and that these seizures may even be delayed months or years after the vaccine. It doesn't have to happen within the first week or so of the vaccine. And uh, the other thing was the SIDS death. I was talking to, to the group in Pittsburgh about SIDS death and they were saying that, uh, you know, the medical profession still denies it has anything to do with vaccines. 70% of all SIDS deaths follow within two weeks of getting the DPT vaccine. Uh, so that's a pretty good indicator that there may be a problem with uh, this vaccine. Now, if you look at the mechanism, which goes along with my hypothesis of immunoexcitotoxicity, it's activation of these microglia in the brain that destroy these brain areas or make them not work properly. Well, the part of the brain that contains the highest concentration of these microglia is in the brain stem, part of the brain that controls respiration. So when you take a small baby and you inject it with this powerful vaccine and activate these microglia, they begin to secrete these inflammatory excitotoxins and uh, uh, cytokines in that part of the brain. It's not a, a big surprise that in a small percentage you're going to produce sudden infant death. Uh, so in my uh, uh, rather extensive investigation into SIDS death, I think it is, is a vaccine triggered death due to this, this uh, mechanism. And the other thing that uh, people don't seem to realize is the danger of giving live vaccine viruses, like the MMR is uh, composed of live viruses, measles, uh, rubella, mumps uh, uh, virus. The thing we know about these three viruses is that they're, they're immune suppressing viruses, just like the, the HIV virus. Uh, it can suppress the immune system for weeks or even months. And in the suppression, the immune system be, can be so profound that then the child becomes susceptible to other infections. So a lot of things like uh, the uh, Haemophilus influenza meningitis that kills these little children is because they got an MMR vaccine. It suppressed their immunity, then they're exposed to the uh, Haemophilus influenza vi uh, bacteria and they can't resist uh, immunologically, so they end up getting severe meningitis. Because we know most normal children exposed to the uh, Haemophilus influenza bacterium develop no disease. They're fine. Or if they have a disease, it's very mild and they get over it. So there's only a small percentage that actually develop this, and that means their immune system was suppressed. Well, a good way to suppress it is giving them an MMR vaccine. Now the other thing is we know that when you inject live viruses in people, in a certain percentage of those people, that virus will live for the rest of their life in their body. And they did a study on elderly people and uh, looking for measles virus in their tissues. And what they found is if you looked at their brain, 20% of them's brain had live measles virus in it. And if you look at their other organs, about 45% of their organs had live measles virus in it. Now, when you make a live vaccine, what you do is you attenuate the, vi the virus so it won't cause measles. That's, that's the whole idea. You take this virus 
and you run it through tissue cultures until the virus loses its ability to produce the measles illness. You call that an intentional